Uh, once again, I would like to thank God for another opportunity, according to me by the bishop, to come and stand on this exalted podium to be a blessing to your life. And I believe that God is going to speak to you this afternoon. Amen. Um, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, um, it says, Above all, above how many? Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all. Let's stop there. When you take above all the shield of faith, it enables you to quench all. So he has not said to quench some. All the fiery darts of the wicked. When he talks of the word fiery, it means it is scary, they are hot. That word quenching is a meteorological engineering word, which means to cool suddenly. So above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all. That means if you don't have that shield, you cannot be able to quench even some. So the building of faith is very crucial in our generation today because it gives us the ability to stay in charge. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Luke chapter 19 and verses 12. Just as I introduce uh, what I'm going to talk about today, being children of light, as the theme given to me by the bishop. Luke chapter 19, verses 12. And he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered to them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. And these citizens, imagine now, these are servants, but now he's introducing in citizens. His citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man reign over us. And it came to pass when he was returned having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called to whom he had given the money. Now the pounds have become the money that he might know how much each gained by trading. Continue. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained 10 pounds. Continue. And he said unto him, well done, thou good, uh, good servant, because you have been faithful in very little, have you authority of 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou all over five cities. Continue. And another came saying, Lord, behold, there is thy pound which I have kept laid in a napkin. One thing that is more disturbing here is that you have the same circumstances under which a pound is given, and you have one man produce ten out of one, and another one producing five. This is typical of our input of God's word and its output in the results that we see. Amen. Luke chapter 11 and verses 33. Yeah, just yeah, switch it off. No man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in might see all may see the light. So, no man with a lit candle covers it. Last time I told you that what gives a man position is light. When you have light, position is automatic. Position will look for a man who carries light. The reason why people struggle in life because they carry no light. And the reason why they carry no light because they are not children of the light. A man who is a child of light will naturally reflect and carry the light. Amen. Let us proceed on. Next verse. Go to the next uh, verse 35. Jesus is saying, take heed therefore that the light which is in you be not darkness. Now, Jesus is introducing something else here. We have two types of light. The first one is the light which comes from lighting. The second is light, which is darkness. 
So Jesus is saying, take heed that the light you illuminate is not darkness. Because darkness is also some form of light because it is illuminatable. So the carrier, instead of carrying the light that lighteth every man, carries a light called darkness. So Jesus is saying, take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. So it is very possible to move by assumption when one thinks they carry light, and actually the light they carry is simply darkness. So in this sense, you can have a candle which illuminates darkness according to that scripture. Naturally, a candle should carry light. But spiritual candles have two options. They either carry darkness or light because in spiritual sense, darkness is also another kind of light. Am I talking to somebody? So Jesus is saying, be careful that the light which illuminates from you is not darkness. Hope we are on the same page. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20 and verses 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the berry. There you are. So when he says, carrying light and illuminating darkness, it is springing forth from the carrier of light, which is the candle. So in this sense, if you don't have candle, you cannot make light. So he's explaining, telling us that the candle needed in this endeavor is called the spirit. So the spirit of man can illuminate two. One, it can illuminate light. Two, it can illuminate darkness. Because he says the spirit of the man is the candle. But that candle must be lit. Because if you don't light it, it lights itself by darkness. Amen. So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, which he uses to light his way. Matthew chapter 5 and verses 14. You are the light of the world. Now, now remember, the spirit of man is the candle. Are we together? Now he's saying, you are the light of the world. He has not said you are a light of your village or your family. He says you are the light of the world. It means the illumination must affect the whole world. You are the light of the world. And, and this light is resting on a candle which is your spirit. Am I talking to somebody? So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord that illuminates light or darkness. So now he's saying you are the light of the world. And listen to this, a city that is set on a hill, that cannot be it. Now, the light is becoming a city. In other words, he's saying, you stand out. He's saying, you cannot be hid. So whether you have darkness as illumination or light as illumination, he's saying, <laughs> wherever you are, you cannot be hid. So it is important to be aware of what light I illuminate. It's very important. Because he says, take heed that the light in you be not darkness. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's proceed on. Uh, next, uh, next verse. Let. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before who? Men. Now, remember, he has talked of the whole world. Now, he's zeroing down the whole world to men. And he's saying, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Now, the light here has now transformed to good works. Let your light shine before men that they may see the good works. So the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord 
that enables a man to do works. He says, let your light now shine before men that men may see works. That men may see good works. Now, the light here in this sense is works. Everyone say works. Let your light shine before men that they may see the works. That they may see the works. That they may see the works. Let the light shine that men may see the good works. Amen. Is somebody following me? So, a recap. The spirit is God's candle. Okay? Let your spirit affect your works. So, light in this sense equals good works. Amen. So, when I want, can you give me Greek of works? I need to pick something from the Greek to proceed. I found a, a word called ergon, E R G O N, which means works in this sense, which means effort. Occupation, act, deed, labor, and work. Yeah, Egon. He says primarily but obsolete word to work, to toil, an effort, occupation, by implication, an act, deed, doing labor, or work. Now, he is translating this into two. Amen. You're welcome, sir. He's translating it into labor. He's translating it into act, did, doing, and translating it into occupation. So the works he's talking about here are two-dimensional. You have the acts of occupation and labor, and you also have the acts of deed, which is character. So let your light shine before men that they may see the good labor, the good did the good occupation and the good acts. If anyone is to talk about excellence, it should be we at places of work. Let your light shine before men that they should see the excellency of the works, that they should see the occupation, that they should see the deed, that they should see the act, that they should see the labor, that they should see the work. So when he says you are the light of the world, it means your works, be it character, be it occupational, must affect the world. Amen. Did somebody come to the lunch hour today? Yeah. Let your light shine that men should see. So when he says you are the light of the world, he's saying, he means you are the trailblazer, you are the set person, you are the persetter. Is somebody come to church today? So let your light shine that men may see air gone, that men may see the wax. Sometimes people think wax stop in the spiritual sense of character. Wax don't stop only on character. It even reflects on the way you do your work. We are living in a generation of people who are too lazy. We are living in a generation of busy bodies, people who simply want to pray and not put their hands to work. We are living in a generation where if you are a boss and you are born again, and you are using a born again to work for you, they take you for granted. Because he's a brother. Excuse me, if you're working in my company, and all the time you spend is to go to the prayer mountain and lunch hours, I will chase you out of my business. Is it bad to come for lunch hour? It is called lunch hour because it has got a specific time. There are people who go for lunch hours and they never return until four because the boss is born again. What kind of light are you illuminating? You are illuminating darkness. Amen. Jesus said, take heed that the light in you be not darkness. So what have we done? In most cases, the majority of us reflect darkness instead of light. So let the people see the good occupation. If somebody brings work to you, are going, is it going to come out with excellence? If you are a lawyer, if you are a mechanic, if you are whatever you are, are you striving for excellence? Because Jesus is telling us we are the light of the world. We are the light. Let, let people see the light. 
Let our light shine that people see the works. They see Aegon. They see both character and occupational. Did somebody come to the lunch hour today? I don't know whether you came or you didn't come, but for me, I came. First Peter chapter 2, verses 11. Now, let me take you further on. Being children of light, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers huh, and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts. Uh -huh, he has started. Which war against the soul? C come on. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Yee, what a paradox. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, uh -huh, they may by own, your own good works which they have seen, behold, or oh behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, this is a paradox. Now, they are speaking to you like you are evildoers. Now, they are the same people testifying because your light has turned into wax. Now, the same people saying, telling you you are an evildoer, turns around and sees the works, the ergon, the excellence, eh? and then they glorify God because you, in quotes, the evildoer, you are doing good works. Did somebody come to door? Am I so complicated? He says, <laughs> that they might buy your good works, which they shall behold, not which they shall hear. So ladies and gentlemen, works are very important. Both character and occupational. We are living in a generation that wants what we call is a salvation. Jesus did it all for us. We can go and do whatever we want, then come back and repent, and God will forgive. Indeed, God will forgive, but you know how many times? Okay, God is ever loving and ever forgiving, but just understand God has limits. Can we undo the grace of God? No, we cannot. But you know, he told the children of Israel, and which is a typical church, you have tempted me this, these 11 times, these 10 times. May the 11 times, 11th time never catch you, because you may not live to record the story. Let people see your light and see the good works. Let's, let me give you a typical scripture example of this. So, a man with a lit candle, remember where I came from, that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. How many of you remember that story? So, your spirit is the item you use to retain the light we are talking about. So, if your spirit is not robust, your works are going to be haphazardly done, both in character and occupation. So, it is all the function of your spirit. Why? Brethren, I pray, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And in this sense, the soul is talking about is the spirit. That any investment done towards the spirit will come out as light in works. So every man's works equals his spiritual status. So your spirit is like a seed. So you cannot produce results that are different from what your spirit retains. So if there is any investment to be done, it should be an investment done toward my spirit. Because when I change my spirit, I'm going to illuminate effective light, which will come out as good works. Both in my character and occupational. Am I talking to somebody? That is why when somebody feeds on the tithe, things go bad. Okay. You, you cannot ask God to bless somebody who eats the tithe. You tell him, a father, in the name of Jesus, bless him, bless him. And God said, no, son, I'm not going to bless them. You cannot feast. <laughs> a tithe is, now where is the tithe? A tithe is a function of somebody's spiritual status. You cannot feed on it and things go well with you. I guarantee you. 
Even if you, pray, you call a prayer meeting 365, 24, God will not respond and is merciful. In his mercy, he will not respond outside his word. Amen. So for me to give a tithe, it helps me. I know when you are growing up, we had calculator. <laughs> you know calculator? You have to be exactly on the dot. Precise. When you are driving to church and you get a, a tire puncture, you take from the tithe. And then on the envelope, you write, tire puncture, repair 5,000. I was going to, to, your, to, your, to your ministry. That's your tithe. I've spent your tithe. <laughs> that was the level of understanding we had then, but not anymore. So, when your illumination is darkness, you have a lot of explanations. A man who illuminates true light has no explanations. It is people who illuminate darkness who tell you, now, don't you see? Don't you see my works? Don't you see? A man with light does not advertise as the position of light advertises him because light does not look for a high place. It is men who take light to a high place. So when you have light, people will carry you up. If you carry darkness, you need to explain what you can do so that you attract some attention. A man with light has a few words, but has results and works. So the works follow him. The works are devised is him. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Now, some of you, what, what, what are you doing here? This is a lunch. What are you doing here? You, the reason why you are here is because of the light that the bishop carries. Not so. Do you want to tell me that this is the only lunch hour in town? No, sir. A man who does not carry light is characterized by struggling. Strife. Struggle. Anytime you are struggling with anything, just know you don't have light. If you are a child of light, you must... <laughs> Synchronize. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few characters uh, before I wind up. Daniel chapter 5. From verses 5. And in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. Huh? Not an angel's hand. They were fingers of a man. Maybe God went and cut, cut off somebody's palm to go and write. Because I've already thought that it was the finger of God. <laughs> but when I was reading last night, I, I, I discovered uh, fingers of a man's hand. <laughs> and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster, plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Mm -hmm. Continue. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against the other. The king cried with a loud voice. I want you to mark those words. The king, if, if the president of Uganda cries with a loud voice now, something is big. You are in a state meeting, there is a party, a banquet, there are heads of state there, and the president begins to shout with a loud voice. Uh huh. Bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the Susitayas. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be third ruler in the kingdom. Why the gifts? Read and interpret and I reward you. Why? Okay, let's jump. Continue. Then came in all the king's wise men. 
but they could not read the writing. No make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Continue. Then was King Belsaza greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Mm -hmm. Now, uh -huh. have you seen that grammar? Now, things are going to change. The queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, uh -huh, she overheard the king crying. Okay? And they came and, and she asked, they told her what is happening. Came to the banquet house, and the queen spake and said to king, to the king, live forever. Let not your thoughts be troubled, nor let thy countenance be changed. Why? There is a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father, what was found in him? Light and what? Understanding and what? Wisdom. Like what? The wisdom of the gods was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king I said thy father, made what? Master of what? Magicians and what? Astrologers and what? Chaldeans and what? Soothsayers, not the deputy. So the man who had more light became a master of the Chaldeans. We need a man in Uganda who can even be master of the wizardry here. In the days of Daniel, the prophet, he was the mama fina of those days. Why? He had more access and he had more light, so he had more works. Daniel, by this time, was a retired man. They looked for him. Light gave him a, a position. Men failed to take the gifts of the king. And when Daniel surfaced, the king said, Are you the one I have heard of thee? I am going to give you this. And then he told him, let your gifts remain with you. It is not in me. Light. Everyone say light. So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. If you want to illuminate light, work on your spirit positioning. They will look for you from where you have <laughs> from where you've hidden yourself. I see some people here. The head of state will headhunt you. You've not heard me. And you say, we are stuck with this, but I've been told you are the only one who can do it. Amen. Kings will look for you. Why? Because... You have worked on your candle. Yes. You cannot have your candle blaze and you be hidden under a bushel. The bushel must burn. Some of you don't know John the Baptist. Do you know him? The Bible says he was a burning and a shining light. He was not simply shining. He was also burning. You cross his path, he will fry you. I went for a consultancy, a total consultancy in Ibulisa. They have floodlights. And you see all manner of uh, insects flying around the light. But cross the light, you find them dead down. They have been fried by the illumination. He was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. That is what the world is looking for. You cannot be a child of light and not have results. We are looking for both spiritual and occupational. Stop explaining your business failure. I think God is now calling me to full-time ministry because I've tried business and it has failed. Mm. Mm -mm. No. Go back and do the business until it succeeds. When it succeeds, enroll for full-time ministry. Because Peter and the rest forsook all and followed him. 
they did not follow him when their nets were empty. <laughs> Amen. By the way, <laughs> Peter is a very interesting fellow. They never followed Christ until their nets were full. So there is a man in your kingdom in whom light, understanding, and unveiling of mysteries. Call him. They looked for him using GPRS because <laughs> we didn't know where Daniel was, but the next thing we see, Daniel before the king and is explaining to the detail the account and afterward he's given the accolades. He was busy shining his light. So work on your light. Don't come to the front. Work, work, work on your light. Don't tell us that I'm about to explode. We don't want to see. <laughs> when your light is enough to create effect in the world, newspaper will look for you. I see somebody hitting global headlines here. By then that person could even be me speaking here. Why not? You just, you just pick um, the national newspaper and front page, boom, Richard Jimba. What's going on? I am the hit. Because let your light shine in the world, not on my village. Excuse me, I am a global citizen, according to that scripture. So I am unstoppable. Amen. So, is, yeah, we finish verses 13. When you look at Joseph, it was the same story. How do you explain a servant boy who goes into Potiphar's house and things change? Potiphar has never had, never had in his life such returns under a slave boy who went when, when he was 17. And he was raised by, <laughs> I like saying this, was raised by Mrs. Potiphar upon the guy because he left that place to go to the prison when he was around 27. When she looked at him, she said, what did you call it the other time? Return on investment. <laughs> but how do you explain the man? He's, he's in Potiphar's house and things prosper. They take him to prison. And that prison was being, according to the scripture, it was being headed by Potiphar because the same title they used for the warder of the prison is the same title that Potiphar had. So whatever, the Bible says, whatever happened in the prison, Joseph was the doer. But let me tell you, the candle was blazing. Even in the prison where people should die, the man was eating like a boss. I like one guy who calls it a galavi. The reason why the man was eating like a boss was light. Hallelujah. So whatever happened to the prison, he was the doer. Now, a paradox came. The king had, had a dream and he could not rest. They called all the soothsayers, the wise men, the astrologers. No one had access. And somebody remembered. There is a small man in prison who has light, call him. He did not interpret dreams, sir. He gave the analysis and gave the solution. He made it so complicated that you cannot employ somebody else. Some of you are called to write proposals and you just write it in a way that anyone can copy it. My friend, things don't go like that. And I don't know if they pray. Hey, I pray, oh God, now let, let me be called and be granted that uh, whatever. Uh, your proposal is dilute because you don't have light, man. He wrote a proposal where the king asked, can we find a man who can interpret this? In the whole land, there was no man except one who carried light. From a prison boy to number two in the land, where his former boss, his former master was saluting him. What an insult. I 
I used to clean your dishes. I used to do what? Now, the, the guy is the one saluting the slave. Let me tell you, light goes to people who are children of light. If you are a child of light, we need to see it in agony. Character, occupational works, acts and deeds. That's what you want to see. Stop your explanations. When you see a man explaining a lot, explaining a lot. That's why the Bible says one word is enough to the wise man. Meaning, the rest are demonstrational. That's why we are talking about patterns last week. If you have a pattern, you... you <laughs> You do what your pattern is doing, period. You, you understand it. People will apply to study you. Some of you have not heard that. So, so you study your pattern, your pattern personality. Study. You have your bishop. What does it do? Now, you engage in a word called research. You don't find research hanging around. Sometimes people pay money. Don't they pay you money to go and do research for them? I told you humorously last week, Bishop, what I told them humorously, like, they need to find out what, they, what you're doing. I told them, you want to study your bishop, go and get binoculars. Hide somewhere and make sure that you, you pick his sit room, sitting room very well and you see what he's doing. You go back home, do the same thing. You are going to produce the same results because God is not a respecter of persons but in every nation whosoever does righteousness is accepted hallelujah so children of light are seen from illuminating light not darkness hallelujah let me give you one more and I close The king was offering Daniel gifts. First Samuel chapter 17, verses 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him. Now the gifts even have, have come again. The king will enrich him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free of Israel. Who don't want to marry the daughter of the president? <laughs> Even if you don't love them. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> no, excuse me, the gifts were there. Eh? And every man, if this had happened in today's, today's date, Goliath would have slaughtered a number of them. Because the majority were interested in the gift. These days, we are dealing with a generation that does not fear anything. They can dare. They can dare. This generation dares anything. Speed, whatever, whatever they dare. Drugs, they dare. Sex, they dare. Even here, with this kind of uh, awards, they would dare. Bishop, remember a time when there was this uh, thing of uh, the mast in Kololo? You remember? There is a light that blew on that mast in color, and you are looking for one man to climb up there and replace the bulb. <laughs> and it was 1988, 87. And we are in school in Mengo SS, and some guys were saying, <laughs> I hear there is a guy who went almost halfway, and when he looked down, he saw the world go spinning right said, Ah. <laughs> But today people can climb that must. You put you put a hundred thousand dollars on top of that must, you are not going to find it the following morning. So so the king was offering gifts. Whoever is going to kill Goliath. And all the trained troops, no one had a light. Except a boy who went by chance, I call it default, to take food to his elder brothers, but had a burning spirit. 
Because when he had it, he was charged. You remember the words he says. Who is this man who defies the armies of the living God? In fact, even this guy is uncircumcised. The spirit was burning, man. So Saul gave him his armor. He tried it, he tried it and said, man, I cannot go with this. It is not proven. Because men of light don't try things they don't know. They first gather proof and facts. You have not gathered, gathered any proof. You have not gathered any facts. You want to marry. By proof and fact, I mean, how many married people have you talked to? How many? Okay, how many books on marriage have you read? And, and that is the kind of person now accepting a marriage proposal, all proposing. Do you have facts? We went to a wedding and a certain man stood up. He had been married for 60 years. How many years? I told my wife, we need this man. And I had to make sure I go and give him a handshake. 60 years in marriage. Light. Amen. So David comes with a burning spirit, but behind him there was light. Everyone say light. Because David picks five small stones because light ministered to him and said, you, do you see that man very well? Yes. The whole of his body is covered. You cannot engage him except the forehead. That is light. So David, having gathered all those facts, he said, now, Lord, what do I do? Pick stones as usual. And you have your sling with you, yes. Then take off like a wind. Take off with a stick. And when Goliath, the other side, saw a small boy coming with a stick, he said, man, guy. Hey. The Bible says he was a ruddy guy. And he said, man, you reduce me. You think I'm a dog, man. Just come, I'm going to show you fire. Man. I'm going to give your body to the animals and to the birds of the air. And the boy advanced and slotted his hand into the shepherd's bag and got a stone and charged it. Everyone says, charged it. And when it was released, the angels carried it straight to the man's forehead. Boom! Goliath was killed by a man illuminating light. So what must we do? This is what we must do. James chapter 2, verse 17. I want to give you the practical of what we must do. Some of these I'm going to edit. What must we do? Uh, James 2. Even so faith, if it has no works, it is dead. Have you seen that? When faith has no works, it is what? Dead. When faith has no works, it is dead. When faith has no works, it is dead. So works come from light. So when you have faith and you simply believe and you don't have an action of light following what you believe, you are finished. You're asking God for a job, but you are seated in the house. Oh God, I know you give me a job. You give me a job, give me a job. Thank you for the job. And you sit on TV. Okay, let me prophesy. As surely as the Lord liveth, the job will not get you watching TV. It will get you walking on the street in Kampala. It will get you mopping somebody's office. Well, if you're a generation of people celebrating academic accolades, are you going to eat your certificate? You don't have a job, but you're proposing to a woman. You think a woman is going to eat tongues? Release the house rent. God will say, son, go and work. I will bless the, the works of your hands. And you girls, ladies, hey, you know, for me, I'm going to give my fiancee in Jamute Kamusen. I have no problem with that. But after two years of you investing the money, come back and we see whether you still have that same smile. Because because naturally you will become the leader and you will give instructions and he will become the feminine masquerade. 
<laughs> you come back tired and the food is not cooked. What have you been doing the whole Auntie Muta and this say? You started it that way, inject money until the end. <laughs> And we going to dead people don't have jobs. Dead a man who has a vision. What do I mean by vision? Okay, I'm not reducing you, but a man who is lifting sack in Chikubo has more future than a master's degree older who is just waiting for God to drop a job in his lap. God will not drop a job. He wants you to go and lift that luggage in Chikubo. How do they see me? Okay, let me tell you how it works. As you lift so somebody to go in his car, you are speaking this kind of nice English, and the guy is saying, hey, your English is too good. No, no, actually, I have a master. master's degree, and you are lifting, yeah? Oh, that's a connection. Oh, no, no, what can you do? What did you study? Environmental science. Okay, okay, I have a farm. From luggage lifter to a farm manager. No interview. Light. Everyone say light. light. Everyone say light. light. So, <laughs> faith without works is dead. Now, Matthew 25. Let me just edit that one. You remember the five and uh, five foolish and five wise? Eh? The difference with them is they had each one of them was a candle. Huh? Out together. The five had oil. The five did not have oil. So the light could not burn. When the bridegroom was coming, the one who had no oil started to light darkness. And they wanted those to have oil to give them. And they said, go to them that sell and buy. Are we together? Isaiah 55 says, come, everyone who thirsts, come without money. Come without, and buy. And do what? So it's a personal responsibility to acquire light. Now, how do I get light? Ah, your word is a lamp and a light. You don't read it. You don't meditate on it. It is a waste of time for you. Man, I walk in town with my, with my phones and ears. I don't care about the you know, technology. Man, we're going to suffer from ear, throat, and nose because of the, no, not when I am listening to God's word. Why am I listening to God's word like five hours a day? Man, your eardrums will die. My eardrums will not die. In fact, I've listened to so much using my headphones that almost every three months the headphones are worn out and I need to put on others. But the man is simply growing younger and younger. By the way, this apple I'm turning 45. Do I look like I'm old man? What do I feed on? Light. Acquisition of being a child of light is your personal responsibility. When, remember when those virgins came back and they found the door shut? They were told, I don't know you. Have you seen works? Even one scripture where people were casting out demons and God said, I don't know you do as of iniquity. Why? Character and occupation. How do you improve that? Feed on God's word, it will become automatic. Can you rise up on your feet and begin to give thanks to God? Thank you, Pastor Richard. Father, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for the word that we've heard. We pray that you hope us to be light everywhere we go, in our daily lives, in our occupation, and in our character. Lord, we pray that you will deal with us as we go on today reflecting on that issue of light. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, go well. Uh, to, today we don't have an evening service. We, we will have one uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have a lunch hour and an evening service. And Friday we have a special meeting uh, which God has just told me to conduct.